Hi everyone. So this video is going to be a little bit different. And the reason being is that I decided to change the final project as I told you that I was going to do. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to present, I built a small tiny presentation kind of explaining to you what the unique seller's proposition is, how we use it and how you can master this technique in combination with your elevator speech so that you can actually get better opportunities at being interviewed, at getting people interested in who you are as a professional, what you do, your portfolio, et cetera. Okay, so join me as I try to explain all these things and bear with me as I try to figure out this technology. Okay, so the unique seller's proposition. I am going to assume that you are working really hard on filling out uh, your skill inventory. Now, if you haven't found it yet, you can go to Moodle. It's under week, I think, 13 or 12. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to double check when I send this video. Uh, but just make sure that you download that and you really sit with yourself for a couple of hours and start identifying what you're good at. Once you do that, then imagine what kind of job you want to get. If you cannot envision exactly what you want, then it's going to get harder for you to actually go after what you want. So once you have those two things in place, then come back to this presentation and I'm going to tell you what the unique seller's proposition is. Okay, so these are the steps to follow. Number one, you're going to introduce yourself as you think about this elevator pitch, which should last somewhere between a minute and a minute and a half. You have to introduce yourself, identify what these companies' needs are, and then sell yourself as the solution, okay? So the unique selling proposition is the one thing that makes a product, or in this case, a person, different than anybody else. What is the one thing that makes you unique? What makes you better than other candidates applying for similar positions? What can you offer that no other applicant can? And what is the reason the employers should want to hire you as opposed to anybody else? If you can determine your unique selling proposition and build it into a dynamic paragraph, or in this case, a speech, you will have a real advantage at your interview, your cover letter, and your negotiating position. So if you truly master this technique, because you're like, what are the odds of me getting stuck in an elevator with this person that's supposedly very, very powerful? Well, that may not be the case, but if you manage to master a technique where you can sell your portfolio or yourself or your yourself as an athlete or yourself as a professional in less than one minute, then you can spark interest in anybody. And I promise you, you are going to meet people at parties, during networking um, events, at, I don't know, social events, teachers, professors that you find very intriguing that you may end up wanting to work for as research assistants, whatever your field is, I can assure you this technique will benefit you. So number one, when you do research on this job, I want you to take it seriously. I want you to know, okay, if I am selling myself as an athlete, what is the sport that you want? What do you think other players have that is maybe too average and you are exceptional because of these other skills? So when you look at your inventory skill, you are not looking at the specific skills that maybe make you very incredibly talented is not one skill that's going to put you ahead or give you the advantage is your own combination of specific skills. So for example, for myself, I can say I'm a media scholar. I do research on memes on social media that are based on fictional characters. I'm also somebody that is well versed in decolonial theory, in feminist theory, in critical race theory, and I speak multiple languages. I don't use my inability to speak English without an accent as something that works against me. Instead, I'm selling my ability to speak multiple languages as my advantage. So it's a combination of all these things that ultimately will allow you to decide if you want me to teach a certain class or if you want me to be working at a certain college. So I want you to do that for yourself. Once you identify your top selling point, it should not be difficult to identify the ways in which your skills, credentials, and experiences can solve that problem. But please pay, pay close attention to this order. Number one, skills. Number two, degrees. And number three, experiences.
So why do we place emphasis on skills? Because before you can actually back it up with a degree, you need to say, I am able to do, to perform, to solve these things because of who I am, because of my intellect, because of my combination of things. Sell yourself as the solution. Try to predict what the interviewer's response is going to be. So if you're going to sell your portfolio, think about what kinds of questions do you think these people is going to ask about you? Um, and how are you going to respond to those questions? Once you have identified your own strengths as a professional, once you have identified clearly the company that you want to work for, and just at the top of my head, I can think about Google, for example. So what do you think Google is currently looking for? Do some research. Once you find that, then go back to your skill inventory, go back to the degrees that you're getting, because maybe you're a communication scholar, but maybe they're looking for somebody in public relations. How can a communication degree serve for public relations? So one of the things that I try to tell my seniors all the time is that it really doesn't matter what kind of degree you have, as long as you can sell your degree as the actual solution for the problem. Additional tips, uh, keep your presentation concise and direct one minute to one minute and 30 seconds. And I don't want you to speak super fast to the point where I don't understand what you're saying. I want you to instead select the precise skills, the exact words, the exact verbs that are going to sound very intriguing for the person in front of you. Number two, refer to personal experiences because sometimes you can, like my ability to speak multiple languages, stems from the fact that I've lived in different countries. It's an experience, but only emphasize experiences that ultimately will put you ahead as a professional. We don't want to hear the stories about your dog, even if it makes you look friendly. It's about what you can do for the person in front of you or for the company that you're trying to get. Number three, offer your package as a solution and point to similar problems that you've solved in the past. So in your elevator speech, once you use the right kind of verbs, once you select the right kind of skills that you want to emphasize about yourself, then point to things that you have done in the past. I myself, for instance, can say things like I've taught in North Korea, I mean, in South Korea, I've taught in Latin America, I've taught in the United States, I've presented in Canada, in the US and Mexico and all these things that make me sound very international. So what is it about you that you can say, okay, I have done this. You can actually see that on my record. Think about class projects that you've led or created. Think about trips that you've made. Think about your own family backgrounds, anything that you can use to emphasize yourself. Number four, teased, and this is very important, but do not give away your work. Once you're able to talk about that cool presentation that you delivered in Canada or that very cool year that you taught in South Korea, don't give all the information away. Just tease the person in front of you. You want that person to know more because the minute that person is hooked, you can go like, here's my card. And that's ultimately the moment that you want to create at the end of this entire situation. Okay, so I hope this helps. I am going to continue building this module. Uh, what I want you to do for now is download that skill inventory, find out what your ideal job would be and who the person in your mind is. You're going to write it down as you have been doing for all of your speeches and then make sure that it only lasts a minute or a minute and a half. Email me if you have questions. Bye.